10 somersaults on a safe entry into the killer whale tank 172 feet below. It is an event of skill, of body control, and most assuredly, of steely nerves. Join us today at SeaWorld in San Diego for the World Record High Dive Challenge on ABC's Wide World of Sports. A lady has... at SeaWorld in San Diego, where the killer whales, the dolphins, and the sea lions playfully dive for the fans. But today, in the killer whale tank, there will be a different brand of diver performing for the crowds. This is the World Record High Dive Challenge. I'm Diana Nyad, and working with me is Olympic diver Ken Sitzberger. Kenny and I did not climb up here to give you a sort of gimmicky opening, and I'm sure you can hear by the tremor in my voice that this is no gimmick. We came up to 80 feet, and we're standing on a small foot square perch to try to give us an idea and give you an idea of what these men will be thinking. And don't forget that this 80 foot level doesn't even represent half the height that they will be climbing up to at 172 feet. The first world record was set nine years ago at Cypress Gardens, Florida at 131 feet six inches. The current world record stands at 170 feet and that was set last year at Orlando, Florida at SeaWorld. Today, the divers are going to attempt a new world record at 172 feet. And when I say attempt, that's exactly what I mean. Because last year, out of five competitors, five divers sustained injury. And today, the conditions that they're going to be dealing with are far more difficult than any conditions they have ever encountered before. What I'm referring to is this killer whale pool, 80 feet below Diana and myself. It contains not only salt water, but the temperature of the water is only 52 degrees. Now, the fact is, is that salt water is far more dense than fresh water because of its chemical properties. And as far as the temperature is concerned, suffice it to say that if it was 20 degrees colder, the divers would be diving into solid ice. Oh, I almost forgot. When they hit that surface, they're going to be traveling at over 100 miles an hour. Each diver had to perform a qualifying dive at 130 feet in seeking to obtain a safety go-ahead from the judges to proceed up to the 172-foot level. Each of the five judges simply votes yes if he thinks the diver can handle himself, no if he can't. This was Don Colombo's dive. He elected not to go even though he received approval. Well, I'm, I'm taking a, 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 an overview. I'm looking at the long-term effects. If I go off that thing from the top, I'll, you know, I'm not going to break anything, but I'm bound to tear a ligament. I, I weaken my knees a little bit, and I don't want to run the risk of, a, of missing a whole summer's employment. Now, we talked earlier. You and I sat down, and you told me that you were comfortable with your... Uh, you drew the first position. You were the first diver. You felt like you could do the best dive. You told me that you had trained uh, in the at a fitness center, that you got your legs in shape. Uh, somewhere along the line... There was a miscalculation. What do you think it was, or is, is it the conditions? Um, let me let me start by re-explaining. I trained at a gym for the physical side. I had my wife give me nutritional advice for the the other half of the physical side. I did a lot of mental preparation for this event, and there's one other part that makes sense. It's called logic. Everything went right. I drew the numbers. The mood was right. The place was right. That's right. When I hit that pool at 130, it's uh, it's okay. been five years since I've been that high before. My legs just weren't ready. Rick Winters was up next at the 130-foot level. Like the others, he did not need five yes votes from the judges, but at least three to continue. And he got all five. This is Rick Charles, a veteran high diver, but a high diver that has never exceeded 100 feet before today. No problem. Five yeses, he qualified. Bruce Bocci was last year's world record holder at 170 feet. Because experience plays such a big role at these heights, no one doubted Bruce's ability to qualify, and he did so with five yes votes. Mike Foley, another veteran high diver, experienced some problems during his dive. He was not totally stable. But three out of the five judges voted yes, so he did qualify for 172 feet. Dana Kunsi holds more world records in high diving than anyone in the sport. He kids that he was a graduate of the School of Hard Impacts. Five go-aheads for Dana. Pat Picard, like Rick Charles, had never dived from this height before. And again, no problem. Five yeses. Six of the seven qualifiers will climb up to the 172-foot level. Can we get down? <laughs> Kenny and I are going to be gingerly climbing back down toward poolside right now. Oh, yeah. At the world record...
record high dive challenge in San Diego, Rick Winters will be the first person ever to attempt a successful dive from 172 feet. In some ways, being the first is an advantage. If he comes up with a high score, the others will feel not only the pressure of the height, but the necessity of a great dive. In some ways, being first is difficult. Once you make it, the others relax in knowing that if one man can do it, they can too. To help absorb the impact from this height, most of the divers wear at least two tight suits, sometimes three, and they wear tight supportive braces over the knees. All the divers have consented to talk with us briefly through a microphone up on the platform. We may get a word in with some of them. Rick, can you hear us? This is Kenny and Diana down at poolside. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Well, what do you think, buddy? This thing's getting higher every year. <laughs> you got that right. What's your uh, What's your feeling? Are you going to do it, or are you, you going to walk down? Oh, no, I'm going to do it. No doubt, huh? No doubt. Well, Rick, you looked beautiful on your 130-foot dive. Is that about the way you're going to put it in this time? Well, I'll try to be a little cleaner. It never hurts to be a little cleaner. All right, we're going to leave you to your own thoughts now. Good luck to you. All right, thank you. He certainly appears to be ready this year. He's shaking the ladder back and forth. But the ladder, I've been told, is as stable as it's ever been any previous of the nine years. Look at this view. This is not only SeaWorld. It's all the surrounding areas in the Mission Bay area here right outside San Diego. Getting his knee supporters in place. This is Rick's wife, Barbara, one of the first women cliff divers, and his little two-and-a-half-year-old Holly, and the two-and-a-half-month-old Scarlett, I'm sure, concerned for his safety at this moment. Rick has chosen his favorite dive. It's a three-position back somersault. Just falls. Oh, he's got to hold it. He's moving a little too fast. Oh, he punched through. Good dive. I'm sure he's not hurt. He really punched through. Ken, this makes me very oh, nervous. Right. All right. It made me nervous, too, Diane. I didn't see him come up to the water, and I thought maybe I was wrong for a minute, but you can see the way he punched through, and I'm sure we'll see it in slow motion. Now he falls, he flies, and he's got to really, really hold this. This is what gives him the control. Now, you see what he does right here. He kicks through, and that's what got him down safely. Rick Winter scores seven, six, seven, seven, six point five. They drop the high and the low score, add the three middle scores together, and Rick Winter sets a tough precedent for the rest of the divers. The second diver up will be Rick Charles. He, like all the others, is worried about the impact going 100 miles an hour. Kenny talked to him earlier about that. The impact is my greatest fear. I'm not so much worried about landing straight up and down. It's, it's what's going to happen when I hit the water. So I've been doing a lot of training in the off season. I've been putting on exhibitions uh, in marine land in Southern California in similar conditions, cold water, cold air, so that my body is in diving shape this year, uh, doing a lot of running in the sand, a lot of bike riding to build up my legs, a lot of weight training for my lower back, so that I hope that uh, I'm going to be in physical shape, enough physical shape to withhold the impact. Consider this demonstration of the impact of which Rick Charles spoke. A solid block of ice filled with some fish treats for the whales below. A block that would take an ax to split. A block that tumbles end over end out of control so that it hits at an unpredictable angle. Is shattered into a thousand fragments, as you can see, as it hits from 172 feet. Now imagine the diver to be that block of ice, out of control by impact time. After reaching an acceleration speed of 100 miles per hour, if he is off by the time he breaks the surface, he may easily break bones, tear ligaments, and even damage internal organs. Now back to the competition. There is something about the element of risk and danger that excites a crowd. And this crowd here at SeaWorld looking up at Rick Charles, 24 years of age, are fascinating. Some of them giggle nervously, all of them looking straight up 172 feet to see if Rick Charles can come down safely through the air and enter into the water. Knees very heavily taped. He's got a forward double somersault, half twist. This is the dive that Pat Super made famous. This is his girlfriend, Linda. Look at the face. She's talking to herself nonstop, a couple little smiles, a couple nods of confidence. 
Whenever you're ready, Rick. Look at Rick up there, close. eyes closed, meditating. What's it going to feel like? What do I have to do right off the top? And there's Linda praying for him down below. He's never done this before. He does not know what to expect. He's in the air. He's in good shape. Very good. All right, he didn't hit well. Now, he could have he could have hurt himself. The dive was good. It was solid. He's a strong competitor, strong diver, but he, his feet went apart on the entry. And I know that that has got to hurt. Well, he didn't hesitate. Once he got in the air, his he was a picture of complete concentration. Came around, he viewed the water, but right here is where it really gets critical. The bottom just fell on him. His legs went apart, his hands were to his side, and he really took a shot. Rick Charles is two and a half points out of first place, but there must be a great deal of satisfaction in knowing that he is only the second man ever to dive from 172 feet. Rick, what happened up there? The dive threw me off. I came around, and at 130, at a, whatever it was, 150, whatever. 140 feet, I'm looking down at the water. So <laughs> I, I kind of panicked, and, and then I hit the acceleration zone right at about 100 feet, and all of a sudden I was in the water. So I really didn't get a chance to tighten up and to uh, enter the water the way I wanted to. But fortunately, uh, I've been training physically uh, very, very hard, and I was able to withhold the impact. Took yeah, a shot, you really did take a shot, and there is that acceleration factor right in the middle there that just yeah, really that, surprises you. Know, it's my first time up there, and that's what threw me off. So fortunately, I, I'm not hurt bad. I'm not, and I think that's the most important. Well, we're glad you, you got down safely, and good luck. We'll probably see you next year. <laughs> sure. Rick Charles successfully completes his first dive from that height. Bruce Baccia now just climbing past the 90-foot mark. He has some 82 feet yet to climb. He is the world record holder. Last year in Orlando at SeaWorld there, he dived 170 feet. The pressure's on him to repeat. We'll be back in just one moment for his dive from 172 feet. Syncrasies up on that tiny platform almost 17 stories high. Bruce Bocci, defending champion, is going through his own form of mental preparation. Let's try to get a quick word with him. Bruce, your mic is open. This is Kenny Sitzberger down at poolside along with Diana Nyatt. How do you feel, buddy? Pretty good. I'm ready. All I have to do is execute the same dive I had from 130. I did not be there. You, still, you look a lot more confident than you did at 130 even. Right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I feel great. I'm, I'm loosened up. The only thing I don't really like is the ladder. It's pretty shaky up here. Is it shaky? It's very shaky. Last year, we had a very solid ladder. I'm just going to try to keep it out of my mind, but... All right, well, we won't keep you. I don't want to interrupt your concentration. It's you got okay. one dive to do. you got to defend your title. Good luck. Thank you. He is a gutsy diver. You got to give him credit. He came in here last year and he had never competed in the high dive challenge before. He went up the first competitor, drilled his dive, and three or four guys dropped out of the competition right away. There's his mother, Joyce, looking straight up at him. It's something you just don't need to worry about, having the ladder a little bit uh, shaky and wavering up there, Ken. Yeah, that really surprised me because all the other divers I talked to commented on how stable this ladder really is. But of course, that was before they moved up to the world record level of 172 feet. Well, Bruce had said before that he was quivering at the 130-foot level, and he just may be a little nervous up there. But you can't really blame him. The water is awfully cold. And don't forget, it is salt water. He seems to get ready and then fall back and then get ready and fall back. You've got to face your moment of truth up there, and if you're not ready, there's no shame in waiting. Only 20 years of age, but he is the world record holder. Good jump, nice solid. He looks like he knows exactly where he is. Punched it. Oh, he landed way short. He looks like the shadows might have misjudged. I think he's all right. He did a nice dive. He took a shot in the chest. He'll be sore tomorrow, but nothing serious. He did come over on his chest. You think he might have got the wind knocked out of him a little bit. Oh, he looks good, though. Okay, we'll see what he did here. Nice jump. He's really, really confident for 172 feet. He's got a good feed. He's got his eyes riveted right on his target. But somewhere he passed through the acceleration point and lost it for a split second. And Bruce Bocci becomes the third man ever to successfully dive from 172 feet. You took a shot in the chest, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Ladder was really shaky up there. 
And uh, that's why it took so long. I just, every time I, every time I got set, my legs would start shaking. And when I finally took off, I got the right jump, the jump I oh, wanted. The jump was great. And then I tucked and kicked out and. Was it the shadows or the uh, the fact that the sun's the shadows, going? I, it's just the speed also, but speed. I just didn't kick on it. I didn't keep hold the tuck long enough and kick on it. Kick back a little short of it, but I hit the water, took a face shot. My face is wrung up a little bit, but well, my, let, let me give you. Right, I'm okay. Let me give you the good news. You're in first place. Well, it's a long way to go. I hope I can take it, but if not, I'm still a winner because I'm healthy. You bet. Nice and going. I'm a world record holder. Good enough. Nice going. Thank you. There are three divers remaining with the chance to keep Bruce Bocci from winning this event for the second consecutive year. As the kids enjoy a beautiful day in the park, those three divers are preparing themselves. We'll be back later with them and the World Record High Dive Challenge. Record height set, would you believe, at over 170 feet. We're back at SeaWorld in Mission Bay, San Diego, where six brave high divers are trying to put in their best performances from 172 feet. Three divers have already tested their courage. All three succeeded. Rick Charles slightly lost control, but scored 18 points. Rick Winters, 20 and a half points, and Bruce Bocci, now the man to beat, has 22 points. This is Michael Foley. Kenny, he was the only man in qualifying from 130 feet who received only three yes votes to move on up from the judges rather than five. What does that indicate about him? Well, it means that his dive from 130 feet wasn't quite stable enough for all five judges to say that it was okay for him to progress up to the 172-foot level. Three said yes, two said no, and quite frankly, this is the first diver I've seen in the last nine years to ever really go up to that height after receiving two no votes. Here he goes. Getting his balance. Oh, nope, not quite ready. <laughs> Listen, some the divers have been known to walk right back down, and nobody thinks the less of them for it. Not at all. Just the courage to that provides that initial inertia has got to be something. There he goes. He looks, he looks, he's moving fast. Oh, he did the right thing, and he was in control, even though it wasn't a good dive. He moved his arms to the side, and he got down safely. He took a shot, but he did know what to do, and he got himself in trouble, and believe me, he was in trouble. Way over on his side, you can see the eyes closed. They're worried about him. Oh, oh he's, he's hurt. Let's try to analyze this. He's got a good jump. He comes over the top and he spots the water. Everything is fine up until this point. As his legs come over the top of the dive, he will hit horizontal. And once they go beyond horizontal, he begins to pick up a tremendous amount of speed. Right here, the eyes go blurry. He can't see the exact surface of the water. He begins to twist and boy, he takes a shot. What happened? Just the bottom fell out and you couldn't see the surface? Or? I, I had a hard time holding, uh, holding the brandy. I was moving a little bit. And I was moving. I couldn't hold the... Well, I was rotating a little too fast. You seem okay. Nothing permanent. No, no. It's just quite a shock. Well, nice going anyway. Thank you. Scores 4 3, 4, 4, 2. And at this point, I doubt Michael Foley cares what the scores are. He's, he's uh, at least knows he's walking and he's alive. Dana Kunze will be the fifth man up the ladder. Dana is only 22, but his list of accomplishments in this sport makes it seem as if he's been diving for decades. Kenny got a chance to ask him about his confidence and his preparation. Ken, I've been feeling really good. I, uh, I guess for the first time that I've been doing these world records, this would be number seven for me, that I finally inside realized that I'm going to have to take a few months' time preparation beforehand. And that's exactly what I did. I went up into the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia. I uh, ran. I used the Virginia, uh, University of Virginia Tech's facilities. They were very uh, cooperative and let me in there. And uh, I feel really good. I feel real strong. My 130-foot dive was really good. When I have to admit, though, when I got up there and looked down and went, yeah, this is it again, you know. Last year I said I wasn't going to be up there, and then my phone rang off the hook for about two weeks until after, and, uh, after I decided that I was going to retire. And uh, every time I picked up the phone, I went, okay, you knuckleheads, I'm going to do it again one more time. And uh, I feel real good. I took the time, I have to say, though, I took the time to go out and prepare myself mentally and physically. And I think it's helping out a lot. Dana Kunze, knees taped, ankles taped, several suits on. 
and he is no newcomer to this event. He's been world target diving champion, world high diving champion, has more records than anyone else in the sport of di high diving. Dana, this is uh, Ken Sitzberger and Diana Nyan at poolside. Can you hear us? Yeah. How do you like your position, buddy? Well, I felt real strong on my first dive. Mm -hmm. And uh, the scores have been kind of low, so I'm hoping that I can get a good dive in there and up that scores a little bit. I need a win real bad. Dana, that's all I was going to ask you. You've seen the other dives, and everybody was fairly safe, but uh, nobody really put one in there. Yeah, that's true. Uh, golly, I'd like to put one in there. <laughs> all right, we'll wish you good luck, and go for it, buddy. All right, thanks a lot, Diane. He, uh, he's trying not to be too exuberant, but I know from uh, my experience with Dana over the last three or four or five, six years that he loves his position. He's the second to last diver. If he does a good dive, there's a good chance the last diver will scratch. He's a, uh, Pat Picard's a rookie, and uh, if Dana nails one, which he's very, very capable of doing, the, the competition will be over. And don't forget that these divers are not only athletic competitors, they're performers. They go all over the world, the Oktoberfest in Germany, et cetera, performing for the crowds. And they know how to salute, and they know how to give a smile, even when they're hurting, when oh, they yeah. hit bottom. His dive is uh, far more difficult than any dive that any dive that the other competitors have used. It's a reverse triple somersault. Baccia did a single somersault. And most of the other competitors did double somersaults. He's doing a reverse triple somersault back towards the platform. You can see him going through some of his arm movements. There he goes. Good jump. He's in good shape. He knows where it is. All right! He drilled it. No way that they're going to take it. Dana got to keep three nines on that dive, and I really didn't see too much wrong with it. Maybe his arms went up a little bit on the finish right after the second somersault right here, but boy, did he get a good entry. Once again, 172 feet, solid jump, solid spin, solid interruption. Sees the water, comes out. And he knows where he is, and he drilled it. We could take a look at Dana Kunzi right now. Look at the tape on the knees. Absolutely in shreds, and that's all from, from the impact. That, that tape was tight, absolutely bandaged tight around his knees before he went. <laughs> well, you weren't kidding. You said you were in good shape, both mentally and physically. You came around. You were in a little trouble but you spotted the water and you just drilled the finish. Excellent dive, one of the best I've ever seen you do, and I mean that sincerely. Thanks a lot, Kenny. Uh, I really felt good coming out of my double gainer going into the, my fly for my triple gainer. I will have to admit something, though. The water is very hard. I lost my legs underneath the water, as you can see by the taping job that I did. Uh, I, did, I think I might have pulled a little bit of muscles, but uh, uh, I had a little little pressure separating my legs. Well, keep in mind, we're salt water, it's 52 degrees, and that's got to yeah. make a big, big difference. But you were in such strong mental and physical shape that I, you know, it was such a pleasure for me to see you. I'd like to say one thing else, Kenny, that I didn't get to say earlier, that uh, I wanted to dedicate this dive to my grandmother, Lillian Anderson. So, Granny, this one's for you. Well, good enough. Nice going. Thank you. Dana Kunzi from Minneapolis with his family and friends watching just hit a near perfect dive to move into first place. But rookie Pat Picard is climbing the ladder right now to become the sixth man to attempt to dive from this height. Honda introduces two sided pressure. Not only does he have the problem the five divers before him faced, the damage of impact, but he follows Dana Kunzi, who scored three nines just minutes ago. Pat? Can you yeah. hear us? This is Ken, Ken Sitzberger and Diana Nyan down at poolside. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. 
Well, how do you feel? You watch Dana Kunji. He uh, scored a total of 27 points. Uh, I can't imagine anyone other than yourself actually going up after watching that dive to try to compete with it. What's your motivation again? Well, I know I've got my work cut out for me. Uh, the motivation is basically that I'm up here not only to try and win the contest, but because I want to do this dive. That's what you said earlier, and you've been consistent. And, and quite frankly, I had forgot that you had mentioned that. And most divers are in it for the money or the glory or whatever. You actually like it, don't you, Pat? I enjoy it, yeah. Attaboy. I plan on doing a good dive. I want to go after it all the way until I hit the water. And I just plan on being real tight on the bottom. Well, be tight on the bottom. We won't disrupt your con uh, concentration any longer. Good luck. Thank you. The high diving has come of age, and it is a true legitimate diving competition. No question about it. Silence, please. Asking for silence in the audience. Any sorts of laughs or little yells can be terribly distracting. He's doing a flying reverse somersault. He's in good shape. He holds it, holds it. Now he's okay. He was in a little trouble. He hit short. He hasn't come up. They better go in. Get up! He's doubled over. Oh. They've got to go in and pull him up. This is one of the women's divers now. Oh, my word. They're yelling for him to get the check the mouthpiece, get the mouthpiece, get the mouthpiece. out of the water, out of his mouth. Pat Picard does not seem to be conscious at the moment. They've got to get him out of the water as soon as possible. Kenny, what can he be going through right now? Well, I was concerned, just like everybody else, that he might be wearing a mouthpiece similar to the type that boxers wear. It appears that he wasn't wearing one, but he could have swallowed his tongue. Listen to his breathing. Listen, the, the diaphragm is contracting. He's, he sounds like a hurt animal. Listen. Well, he's moving his hands and legs now, so it appears that he's beginning to respond. Let's see if we can see where he got in trouble. As he took off, it seemed like he was okay, but as he hit the acceleration point, just as his legs passed through horizontal, right here, he seems to be out of control. Right now, he's fighting desperately to maintain stability, but he is out of control. He's moving so fast, he doesn't be able to see the surface of the water, and the impact was just too much for Pat Picard to handle. Once more, let's take another look. I thought he was solid at takeoff. He's in good shape. He's square to the platform. He comes around, he sees the water, and he seems to panic. Now his feet pass horizontal. He is accelerating at an incredible speed. His eyes are blurred. He just doesn't see where he's going to land. And apparently, the impact knocked him unconscious. The word is now that he is not seriously injured. I'll tell you, Danny, you could have fooled me. The paramedics team has jumped into action here. They have put a neck brace on him and are expediently taking him to the hospital. His eyes are open now. He is responding. And as Kenny says, the word from poolside is that he doesn't appear to be seriously hurt. Well, Pat Picard's dive has been an unfortunate note to an otherwise brilliant day of high diving. Dana Kunze adds another title to his list as he becomes this year's champion, and Bruce Bocci, last year's winner, has finished in second. These are the only five divers now to successfully complete a dive from the new world record height of 172 feet. This is Diana Nyad with Kenny Sitzberger, and we're very glad you joined us today in San Diego. Frank Effer, once again from Louisville, we'd like to give you an update on Pat Picard. Now, although he seemed seriously injured, Pat was in the hospital only a few hours, and amazingly, he incurred no injuries whatsoever, and we're glad to report that. Next Saturday, ABC's Wide World of Sports.